You often hear YouTubers say, don't look in your comments section. They claim that there's little to gain from trawling through comments, and in all likelihood, you'll just end up getting hurt. But I do sometimes get brave enough to glance at the comments, and when I do, there's one sentiment expressed pretty regularly. The essence of the comment is that the EU needs us more than we need them. And conversely, you see the line that the UK needs the EU more than they need us. So we thought that we'd try and get to the bottom of this once and for all. Does the EU really need the UK? Now on the surface, this might seem like a super petty question, but this isn't simply a childish exercise of discussing who the EU's best friend is and who gets the friendship bracelet. This could make a serious difference to the negotiations and continued relationship between the two groups. If the EU does really rely on the UK as much as some people like to claim, then all of the hardball tactics the EU has been trying is just posturing. It's the EU just pretending they hold all the cards, when in reality, they need the UK on side. On the other hand, if it's the UK relying on the EU, then the EU doesn't really need to cut the UK a deal at all, and absolutely can afford to use hard negotiating tactics, as it doesn't make a huge difference to them whether the UK stays or goes. This is a topic which leaves people pretty divided, and not just in our comments. According to a recent YouGov poll, 33% of Britons thinks that the EU needs the UK more while only 17% think that the UK needs the EU more. Unsurprisingly, if you poll the rest of Europe, they think that the UK needs the EU more. So who's right? Well, when it comes to deals and international trade, economics is often the most important factor, so let's start there. For the purposes of this video, we'll be doing a very basic economic analysis. If you're interested in us going into more detail, let us know, and maybe we can dive a little deeper in the future. Also, if you're not happy with the figures we're using, HMRC, the ONS and the European Commission all tend to give slightly different figures, so we've tried to be as consistent as possible and use the HMRC figures when we can. Alright, enough padding to get this video to the 10 minute mark, let's get to it. The UK is the second biggest country in the EU, at about £2.2 .2 trillion, after Germany, which has an economy at about £3.1 trillion. When you combine the economic power of all of the member nations, the EU as a whole has an economy worth about £14.6 trillion. As I'm sure you've heard a million times before, the EU is obviously a far larger block than the UK in terms of people and the size of the economy, but this doesn't necessarily mean that the UK needs the EU more than the EU needs the UK. A more reliable indicator might be how much each side relies on the other for trade. In 2007, 53% of UK imports worth £257 billion came from the EU, and 44% of the UK's exports worth £162 billion went to the EU. That's a lot of the UK's trade. Now you might have heard that the UK is relying less on the EU for the trade than they used to, and this is sort of true. While the UK is starting to export more to the rest of the world, we're simultaneously increasing the amount we export to the EU according to HMRC. In 2011, the EU made up about 51% of the UK's imports. In 2017, it was 53%, and it might still be rising. According to the ONS, in the years since May 2017, the UK imported 55% of their goods from the EU, and exported 51% of their goods to the EU. Also, these numbers don't even include countries like Norway or Switzerland, who aren't part of the EU, but are within the EU's regulatory framework. About 4% of the UK's exports were £14.5 billion, and about 5% of the UK's imports were £22 billion are with these countries. There's a lot of ways to spin these numbers, but using the latest ONS figures for the year starting May 2017, and including Norway and Switzerland, 60% of the UK's import trade and 55% of their export trade is done with countries within the EU's regulatory framework. To put this into perspective, the UK's second biggest trading partner, the US, makes up about 13% of their exports and about 8% of their imports, so the EU dwarfs all of the UK's other trading partners. Some people argue that the UK actually does less trade with the EU than the numbers might say, because of the Rotterdam effect. Basically, Britain sends some of their exports destined for non-EU countries through Rotterdam ports before they go on to their intended destination. The same thing happens to imports, with some of their imports passing through Rotterdam before they head to the United Kingdom. This is counted as EU trade, when it could, or maybe even should, be counted as non-EU trade. Though it's hard to quantify how much of an impact this has, the ONS have estimated that it could affect 2% of UK-EU trade. Anyway, even without the Rotterdam effect, it's pretty clear that the UK needs the EU quite a bit when it comes to trade, 
but let's see how much it works the other way around. If we don't look at countries within the EU27, the UK is the EU's second biggest export market for goods, placing behind the US. As of 2017, trade with the UK makes up about 16% of the goods that the EU exports to non-EU27 countries. However, it's important to note that this isn't really fair, given that the UK is currently within the single market, so they've got a competitive advantage against all other non-EU trading partners. If the UK were to leave the single market, customs union and free trade area, that number would almost certainly drop. When you include EU27 countries within the analysis, like economic powerhouses Germany and France, the UK makes up about 8% of the EU's exports and about 4% of imports. These aren't small numbers, and it's definitely beneficial for the EU to keep a trading partner that makes up nearly 10% of exports, but when it comes to trade, it looks like we need the EU much more than they need us. One quick thing we need to cover, it's such a cliche but we really do have to deal with it. People in favour of Brexit love to bring up that the EU won't let us leave on unfavourable terms as the German car industry relies on us too much. It's pretty easy to understand why the German car industry is brought up so regularly, as it's a huge industry, worth an estimated 482 billion euros in 2016. And when you consider some of the mammoth car brands who manufacture in Germany, that's hardly surprising. So should these companies really be shaking in their boots? A lot of their cars do end up in the UK. The United Kingdom is actually their biggest market, buying 769,000 German cars a year, far ahead of the US, who's in second place, importing 494,000 cars a year. This makes life difficult for German Chancellor Angela Merkel. She said back in 2016 that she didn't want industry bosses interfering with the delicate negotiations, but she also doesn't want it to look like she isn't protecting German businesses and jobs. That said, if the UK leaves with no deal at all, it could seriously affect the German supply chain, with the CEO of the German lobbying group who represents BMW, Volkswagen and Daimler saying that supply chains could be torn apart. However, despite this, he claims that the UK will be hit harder than Germany, with jobs and production facilities being moved from the UK back to the EU after Brexit. And this isn't just hypothetical job losses. A number of car companies have said that they're not investing in the UK or are pulling investment due to Brexit and the uncertainty around it. This is actually very important for the UK, where the top four areas of manufacturing are all related to the manufacturing of vehicles. If you want us to dive deeper into what the UK actually manufactures, we're considering a video on the topic. So drop this video a like and comment below to let us know you're interested. So anyway, while the Germans do export a lot of cars to the UK, there is an argument to be made that the UK will be more affected when the car manufacturers move their operations out of the UK. But that's enough of discussing cliché slogans of Brexiteers. After all, trade isn't everything. Another reason that's often given when people say that the EU needs the UK is the money that the UK contributes to the EU budget. So how much does the UK actually pay the EU? Well, for starters, it's not the £350 million per week that certain buses might have you believe. That would amount to a little over £18 billion a year, which is what the UK would pay if they didn't have a rebate. The rebate was negotiated by Thatcher in 1984. It was basically because back then, about 70% of the EU budget was spent on the common agricultural policy, and most of this money went on subsidising French farming, while the UK didn't get much out of it at all. This is because of the complicated way that funding allocation is calculated. But what it basically boiled down to was that the UK hasn't got as many fields as France and as such doesn't get as much money. The UK obviously didn't like subsidising inefficient French farmers, so they negotiated a rebate, which means that the UK doesn't pay as much as we would otherwise. Most EU countries obviously hate this, but it sort of makes sense. The common agricultural policy still accounts for 37% of the EU's expenditure, and the UK still doesn't get much money from it. Anyway, that's a separate debate for a separate video. Though, does anyone really want a video about the EU's farming policy? But regardless, the rebate essentially saves the UK a lot of money, about £4 billion each year. So they end up paying more like £14 billion into the EU's budget each year, which comes to about £250 million a week. This accounts for about 13% of the EU's budget, making the UK the third biggest contributor after France and Germany, and one of only 10 net contributors. By net contributor, what we mean is the UK is spending more into the EU than they get back. The UK gets back about £5 billion in public sector spending, and about a billion more in private sector credits. With all this counted, the UK pays about £136 million a week to the EU, 
To put that in perspective, the UK spends about £1.4 billion on education per week, £2.6 billion a week on the National Health Service, £3.6 billion per week on pensions, and £800 million per week on defence. According to the Bank of England, economic growth has decreased by 2% because of Brexit. If that's true, that's a loss of around £400 million per week to the economy. Nonetheless, however you frame it, £136 million a week is still quite a lot of money, and the EU would probably struggle if they lost 13% of their budget overnight. However, the UK signed up to a divorce bill with the EU, which means that they'll continue paying their EU spending commitments, even those that go on past the next EU budget in 2020. The EU's budget might be a little tighter, and they might have to ask some countries to contribute a bit more money. But countries such as Finland have already said that they're happy to put a bit more in to cover the hole left by the UK. So far, it looks like the EU might be alright without us. However, there's one area in which the EU might need the UK, and that's security. While there isn't an EU army just yet, there are some EU security programmes, like Europol and the European Arrest Warrant. All EU states also have access to the second generation Schengen Information System, the European Criminal Records Information System, the Europol Information System, and any information which is shared as a result of PROM decisions, a commitment towards better cross-border cooperation on DNA, fingerprints, and vehicle registration information. The EU also has a common security and defence policy. At the moment, the UK has one of the biggest militaries in the EU, and one of the best intelligence services in the world. They play a big role in EU security. However, Michel Barnier has implied that there will be less security cooperation post-Brexit, saying that on the 29th of March, the UK effectively becomes a third country when it comes to defence and security issues. I know it's just a negotiation, and so everything can be used as leverage, but it seems, well, silly for the UK and EU to stop cooperating on security post-Brexit. So how much does the EU need the UK? So far, it looks like they could lose access to a major trading partner, 13% of their budget, and lose an important ally when it comes to security. They know this, and they've been pretty honest that they want the UK to stay. But while the EU is going to lose out on all of those things, so is the UK. The United Kingdom will lose single market access to a trading bloc which makes up about 50% of their international trade, an important security alliance, and, although they get to keep £136 million a week, that will almost definitely be cancelled out by lost economic growth, at least in the short term. It looks like both sides actually need each other more than they might like to think, but the stats seem to suggest that the UK needs the EU slightly more than they need the UK. In anticipation of angry comments for our lack of patriotism, let me just say that this is not an argument against Brexit. Whether or not we should leave the EU is a different question to who needs who more. It could well be the right thing to do, and only time will tell, but as things stand, it looks like we need the EU far more than they need us. For more news and Brexit updates as they happen, subscribe to TLDR News on YouTube. And while you're at it, make sure to follow us across all social networks. You can find us by just searching TLDR News on almost every social network.